most grateful for bringing us to another brand new year, the year 2023. Thank you for your mercies that has kept us. Father, we want to begin the year with you. How well a man begins determines how well he will go. We acknowledge that without you, we can do nothing, nothing. And so, Lord, we ask that you take off the year with us. Lord, we ask that you grant us instructions, directions for the year ahead of us. We want to have a maximal year. We want to have a fruitful year. We want to have a meaningful year, an impactful year, a better year. The Bible said the part of a righteous is like a shining light, shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. It's wrong that this year is not better than last year. And so, Lord, we plead with you that every wisdom we need, every counsel we need, as we pray through, I pray that you send help to every one of us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. We appreciate God for keeping us. We thank him for his mercies. He has been there for us all the way. Even when you don't feel it, even when you don't see it, Bible calls him the present help in the time of need. He's closer than any man. We thank God for every one of us. We were here through the night. Most of us were here, if not all, from 9 p.m. And um, we had some time in God's presence. We prayed through into the new year, celebrated the year, the new year, and we prayed some prayers. We live about 12.30, and I believe that before you settle down, maybe one, two, or thereabouts, and uh, we're here again. We trust that um, there's a reason why God is having us come back to start up this year with us. We want to give some brief instructions. This service is three or four in one. It's the first, um, it's a New Year service, number one. Number two is uh, the first Sunday of 2023. Number three is the first day of January. 2023. So we're doing three things in one. Usually, the first day of every month, we take some time to pray for the month. And uh, we're going to be taking some time to pray and committing the month and the whole year to God in prayers. But it's not everything that's uh, prayers. There are things that are wisdom application. That's what the Bible says. Wisdom is a principal thing. Before I give us some tips, we're going to be doing some brief planning, then we go to the word of God and pray. The Bible said in the Shepherd Psalm 23 that the expectation of a righteous shall not be cut short. So it's not correct. Proverbs 23 verse 18. For surely there's a future and a hope, and your hope will not be cut off. The expectations is King James that says, For surely there's an end. And Thine expectation shall not be cut off. So it's not correct. You just blank, blankly uh, just enter the year without expectations. It's good you set this, my expectations. These are things I want to achieve. These are things I want the Lord to do for me. We want to begin by giving us some time. Please, um, Bro David, can you help us? For those that don't have piece of, pieces of paper, there's some things you're going to write on the piece of paper and you're going to drop on the altar your expectations, but some things you're going to write on your jotter. So I want to believe that you have a jotter. If you don't have a jotter, you should have a phone. So you should write some things down. I'm going to be telling you what to do, but I want to give you the first two, three minutes to write down your expectations for 2023. You must not enter this year blank. You must have what you're expecting, looking forward to. You know, one of the things that keeps you living is expectation. When you have something you're looking forward to, it gives you hope. You're looking forward to something. You can't die. If you're not having something looking forward to, there's no reason to leave. You leave because of something. So please, can you quickly write down what are your expectations? What do you want the Lord to do for you? If you don't have a piece of paper, Bro David, can you help bring plain sheets from the office and cut and share? We're going to be very fast because our time is limited and so much to do. And there's Holy Communion. We're going to be taking communion at the end of this meeting. For those that are fast, as you're writing your expectations, that one you're going to drop. Write it on a separate paper. You're going to drop it on the altar. We're going to pray about it. Then the second thing you're going to be writing is you're going to be writing what you want to do for God 
in 2023. That one is going to write in your own notebook, your own jotter. The first one is what you want God to do for you, your expectations, what you want Jesus, God, to do for you. Then second, secondly, what are you going to do for God this year? It might be what you are already doing, or there are things that God is already putting as ideas in your heart that you have not done them before. It has come to your heart, but you're not writing them. The next step you need to do, after coming to your heart, you write it down. Write down what you are perceiving that you want to do for God this year. Write it down. I expect everybody to be writing. I'm going to be fast. That one is in your note, Jota, remember? That one is not to be dropped. But we'll pray along. Then number three. You're going to be writing down your Bible reading plan for this year. How are you going to read the Bible this year? I don't know your plan, how you read your Bible. Because we must finish the Bible, we must go through the Bible. Um, there's a plan for one month, there's a plan for three months, and there's a plan for a year. But I don't know how you have been reading your Bible, but write it down. This is how, and this, this one is for day, every day, what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be reading your Bible daily. Daily. And possibly write the time. Your Bible reading plan for this year. To finish the Bible. Three chapters. I'm going to read from this time to this time. Write, be deliberate about it. Don't assume in your head. Write the vision. Make it plain. Write down your Bible reading plan for this year. And I expect that it should be, if you're reading one chapter last year, make it two chapters this year. I'm going to be leading you to do more. God is expecting more. Because you want to see more, you do more. You want to see more, you do more. So write down your Bible reading plan. Can be thrice a day, once a day, but there must be a daily Bible reading plan and the timing for the Bible reading. Then number three, write down your prayer plan. How is your prayer schedule? That's personal now, not family, not corporate, personal. How is your prayer plan for this year? Last year you were praying this time to this time, 30 minutes every day, or you were not even doing that. But this year, I'm going to be praying from this time, extend the time. And write down the plan every day. These are my prayer time. Do you know David had seven schedules, ten schedules, seven for worship, three for prayers. Daniel had three schedules every day for prayer. Can I put it to you? Even if it's 10 minutes spread through the... 10 minutes this time, 10 minutes this time. Write down a plan. This man is not writing. Are you not with us? You don't have a diary. You don't have a phone. Please, these are serious instructions. I don't expect you to be idling, looking at us. You have a phone, right? Use your phone. Or borrow. Don't say you do it later. Don't assume. Number four. Write down your evangelism plan. You see, every, every day you share tracts, every week you go to a certain place to evangelize. I don't know what God is putting on your heart, but there must be a plan. How are you going to be reaching out? Anybody that comes to your office, I must give him a tract or say a word or something, I don't know. Write down your plan for evangelism this year. How do you want to reach out this year? Number what now? Number five. Your giving plan. Giving plan. Or let me put it this way. Write how you want to spend your income this year. I don't know how you, sh you were spending your income. Write. When the money comes in, my tithes. I, will know the f I encourage us this year. When a lot comes in, before you spend the money, send your tithes. Then go there's e-banking. Because sometimes you will forget to, before you know you have spent the money, or the money is remaining small, and it's difficult for you to send the tithe because you have spent the bulk of the money. So write down your money spending plan. How are you going to spend your income this year? As the money is coming in, this is what I'm going to do. This is for giving. This is for tithes. This is for chapel building. This is for helps. Let's have budget for helps. For helping people. It can be 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 for helping. Let it be a budget for it. Budget for helps. For giving. 
I w- let me ask your budget, your plan for offering. I want you to increase your offering this year. Increase it. Even if it's by 100 naira, 500. If it was 1,000 you were giving last year, can I ask you, prayerfully check it. Can you add some money to that? Write it down. By the grace of God, by the help of God. Because we are praying for more from God, so we should do more for God. If you want to see what you have not seen before, do what you have not done before. If you do the normal, you get the normal results. Do the abnormal, you get abnormal results. Can you add something to your offering? This is my offering this year. This I'm going to be spending my money this year. I'm going to be spending so so money to my parents. I'm going to be sending so so money to this person. Then number five or six. What are your capacity building plan for this year? Capacity building. What additional qualification are you going to get this year? For some people, you've been dragging your feet to go to school to add the qualification. Thank God for your level of um, uh, study. But there's something more. Whatever level you have reached, there are still refreshers course. There are things you can do. Check, write a plan for capacity building, both career-wise and spiritually. Trainings you will go for this year. How, can you, how, how will you build more capacity for what God has you do? Write your capacity building plan, trainings you want to achieve. Put it, if you're not too sure, just write, let it be a blank space and you'll know what to do. You, the training will come about, I don't know, maybe in the area of tra- profession or, or other areas. But ensure that you have a, an additional qualification this year. Then please, can you write down, I don't know, family projects. You have family projects, this is family uh, level. You want to build a house this year, you want to complete a house. A project of building, a, getting a car. Agree as families. What is your family project for this year? What do you want to do, achieve as a family this year? What are your family projects? Write it down. That's this for couples now, for families. What are your projects for this year? If you're single, what do you want to achieve before the end of the year? Then the last for now. The last for now is um. Please, can you put down a plan for holiday and leisure? <laughs> put down holiday and leisure we're going to travel forget about the money huh? put down a plan this might be couple wise it might be individual couple can you decide that we want to take a week out and go to Dubai this year <laughs> you, you, you don't know my God though. Ah. if you don't see us once in a while you know that uh, we have gone somewhere <laughs> Uh, but we're still around, we're here. So write down the plan for holiday, for leisure. If you're a civil servant, write down the month you want to take your leave. Don't be spending your life for, when you're out, without you, they can still do. They will do as if without you, the work will not go. It's not true. If you're not there, they will, the work will continue. So write down a month. Which month will you take holiday? And budget for that. I appreciate my wife for that. She ensures last year, I went in anniversary. I think I traveled. When I came back, she picked me up. She had set up us. There was a hotel I didn't know about. Uh, what's the name of the place? Eh? Palm Garden. Let me not go there. <laughs> she, she booked for three days. I think for two days. Then we had to extend for one day. I told her next year I will do. She said next year is my own. Uh, let me plan. So next year we should make it one week. Because after the three days, we wanted to spend more days there. So, sir, we came back, I think from a hectic meeting, I can't remember which meeting we came back from, straight to the hotel. The three days was not sufficient. It's not, it's, it's not a luxury. It's not a um, waste to spend on rest, on leisure. It's key. So write down a plan for rest, for leisure. Any other area that you want us to write about? These are the ones that the Holy, Holy Ghost put in my heart this morning. Any other area you want us to write about? I think for now, any area you think? All right. Then before we go ahead and share the word and pray, one of the things I want every parent to do, um, you, I want you to, um, every father is the priest of the home. This is the first day of January. So I want to give every, the parents uh, some few minutes to bless their children. This is the first day. We're setting the pace for the year. It's what you see and the things you do that determines what you see and get. It's when the clouds gather 
that the rains fall. You don't expect rain. There's a circle that makes things to happen. You don't harvest if you don't if you, you don't have a harvest if you don't sow. You're going to be speaking to your children. You're going to be laying hands on them and blessing them. We're going to take that first. Then we go to Genesis and set our prayer piece from there, 24. So I want to dislodge us for two, three minutes. We'll gather family by family and the priest of the house will bless you for the year. Release the blessing for the year. Bless your wife. Bless your children. Speak about the, this year. This year will be good for you. You will do well. You will succeed. You will excel. The students amongst them, you will be sound in your studies and the like of it. So please, can you quickly, parent, children, go to your parents and uh, your parents will join hands and bless you. That's the instruction as we continue this service this morning. All right, quickly, I'll give you two, three minutes. It's a sharp one. For those that your parents are not here, we're going to pray for you. Pray for yourself. We're going to later pray for you. I think they should kneel down, then you bless them. Bless them. Lay your hands. Bless them. Pray for them from your heart. From your heart. Because this year must be different. Father, thank you for... Amen. Amen. Now lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher place 
that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New hearts I'm gaining. Every year, every year, still pray. A lift out man. God is a lift out man. The Lord wants to lift someone this year. The Lord wants to lift you. You've been at the same level for too long. God wants to lift you. God is a lifter of men. God delights in the prosperity of his children. God wants to prosper you more this year. Thank you, Father. Confirm your word. Lift that person that you have destined promotion for. In Jesus' name. Time is running fast. Genesis 24. We'll use that story to raise some prayer issues for the year ahead of us. If you're done with um, your expectations, I would love you to drop it by yourself on the altar. Take a step and drop it on the altar. You've written your expectations, please come drop it on the altar. Bring your expectations. The rest, you keep it. The rest, don't write your name. You don't need to write your name. No, then just put it on the altar. Later, we'll put it together. Just come by yourself. Drop it on the altar. Just your expectations. The rest, you keep. The rest of the things is your own. Thank you, Father. Don't worry, even if it's not open, the Lord has seen it. <laughs> Don't open. <laughs> the children to have their expectation. That's interesting. shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head thou oh Lord and the shield, shield for me my, my glory and the lifter of my head thank you Father Genesis 24 Abraham was now a very old man and the Lord had blessed him in every way.
when God gives instruction, yours is just to obey how he does it. Don't bother about how. Don't, don't press calculator. One of the things the Lord said we should do, this, we don't do this year. Don't press calculator with God this year. Don't be calculating your income, calculating. Don't calculate with God. How is, is his? Yours is to obey. How he does it. That's why he's God. All right. Genesis 24, are you there? Abraham was now a very old man. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day, Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, take an oath by putting your hand under my tie. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my house, homeland, and to my relatives and find a wife there for my son. Five. The servant asked, but what if I can't find a woman who is willing to travel so far from home? There were a lot of discourse that went on. Then Abraham prayed a prayer. Verse 7. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, so suddenly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you. And he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. <laughs> If she is willing to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine. I jump to verse 12. I would have loved to read the whole context. Very interesting. Then when the servant arrived, he prayed his own prayer. He said, Oh Lord, God of my master, Abraham, he prayed, Please, I plead with you, give me success today. Show me unfailing love, show, sh and show unfailing love to my master, Abraham. See, I am standing here oh, beside this spring and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. This, I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. Oh, Jesus. Verse 15. Before he had finished praying. <laughs> uh, before he had finished praying. Listen to me. Before you wrote your expectation, Je Jehovah has answered. Amen. But there's a protocol of heaven. Ask and you shall receive. Have you noticed that it's not because you prayed? He does it because he's good. He's God. Before he had finished praying. Can I put it to you? Our prayers have already been heard. God has heard it already. Before he had finished praying, a young woman named Rebecca come, came uh, coming out with a water jug. I jumped to verse um, 16. Rebecca was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was a, still a virgin. There are a lot of issues tonight. I don't have time. She was old enough to be married but she was still a virgin some of us are due for some promotions we're due for some tests for some, 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 expect, some things to, have to happen but they are not happening but that was a miracle she went down to the spring filled her jug I jumped to verse 21 the servants watched her in silence wondering whether or not the Lord had given him success in his mission. He watched. He said, ah, so, is, so that's how God can walk. He watched and saw whether God has given him success in his mission. He was marveled. He was surprised how Jehovah went ahead of him. I jumped to verse 26, 25. Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels and we have Room for guests. This is a year of plenty. They had enough. They had enough. 
Hey. Verse 26. The man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham. He said, the Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master. For he has led me straight to my master's relative. This is NLT. This year is not a year of trial and error. Try this business, it fails. Proposal 1 fails. Proposal 2 fails. Proposal 3. <laughs> he said, no, no. He led him straight, 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 straight. Somebody's already catching the, the, the word. I'm already speaking. I'm going to have time to say a lot of things this morning again. He led him straight, straight, straight. Led him straight, straight. No corner, corner. No, go and come. No, led him straight to his master's relative. I jumped to verse 40. He responded, the Lord in whose presence I have lived. He will send his angel. Okay, he was just repeating the testimony. And verse 48, he repeated the testimony. Because he had led me straight to my master's knees. Then, um, they confirmed in verse 50. Laban replied, the Lord has obviously brought you here. So there is nothing we can say. <laughs> Uh, verse 30, 56. But he said, don't delay me. They wanted to delay him. He said, don't delay me. The Lord has made my mission successful. Now, send me back home so I can return to my master. Don't delay me. Don't delay me. That will be addressing the matter of delay this year. We will come to that if time permits us to go there. Then the last verse, 67. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her deeply, and she was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. All right, so it's obvious that uh, we can't do much, but um, the very few verses I've read, it's an expression of uh, what the Lord is saying to us this morning. I'll just still say one or two things. Then we say one or two prayers. Thank God that um, the council, we're going to start a retreat tomorrow for three days. We're going to be praying, waiting on the Lord. And uh, by next Monday, we're going to be praying as a church. Because we need to enforce some of these things in the place of prayer. That God speaks is authentic, but we must authenticate it, bring it to reality in the place of prayer. The Bible is speaking from the very verse I read, that Abraham was now very old, an old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. You know, there are different aspects of life. Man is also a type of being spiritual and body. Sometimes you're succeeding in your career, but your health is failing you. Sometimes one, one area is doing well, but one area is not doing well. But for Abraham, there was a testimony that the Lord blessed him in every way. The challenge Abraham had was um, not having a child. Abraham was blessed materially. He had substance. He had camels. He had servants. He had an army in his house. There was a time that Lot was taken captive. He gathered the army in his house, pursued the enemy. 318 people trained in his house, was able to save Lot and his people and the whole Sodom people from Sodom from their enemies. But yet, he had a concern. He didn't have a child. But at the end of Abraham's life, there was a record that Jehovah had blessed him where? How? In every way. In every way. So part of our expectation for this year is all-round blessing. All-round blessing. In health, you're bu bubbling. In your career, you're bubbling. As students, you're doing well. The lines are just falling for you in pleasant places. You know, Abraham had um, Ishmael, then he had Isaac. Do you know, the Bible said Abraham was old though. The blessing was so much that if you go to chapter 25, let me read verse 1 of chapter 25. Chapter 25, verse 1. I read it from here. Abraham married again. The Bible says he was very old now. Remember for David, when he was old, 
they, he loved women. But when they brought a woman for him, he couldn't do nothing. Eh? Can't you remember David? But remember, see Father Abraham. Bible said God has blessed him in every way. He was okay. He was old, but the man was still performing. You don't understand. Mom, you understand. Abraham married again. Keturah, his new wife. See the children he has. Next, next, next verse. She bore him Zimran, one. Jokshan, what? Two. If I mention the name, you say two or three. Then Midian. Ishbak. Sh eh? Midian is what? Three. Ishbak. Mid okay. Meda Midian. All right. That's number what? Then Ishbak. And Shua. Number what? <laughs> the thing was still walking. The Lord has blessed him in every way. In every way. The area he had a challenge. When the Lord visited, the Lord gave him double, plenty, more than double. That area that the Lord, that it looks as if God is not, this, is not working. This area, you're, you're striving in other areas of life. In 2023, that area of need, Jehovah visits it. Amen. Expect a visitation of God in 2023, in that area of expectation. I don't know what you wrote down. But the Lord is saying, he's going to be blessing you in every way in 2023. Hmm. Let's go back. I think it's going to be more prophetic than praying. I think we should go that way. Yes. But you know, Bible said one day, Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, he called him to swear. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my homeland, to my relative, and find a wife there for my son. At this point, God has blessed him in every way. But he needed no, in the Bible days, parents marry for their children. And there's a promise on his head. Of a seed that's going to come out from his lineage. So he needed to ensure that Isaac married correctly. So he took upon himself the responsibility of finding a wife for Isaac. So he called, called the older servant. He gave him definite instructions. First of all, he told him that you must swear. That you must not marry based on convenience. Because the Canaanites are around you. No, you must take a journey. He specified where he should go and find a wife for his son. He, it was so serious that he said, swear by the, by the God of heaven that you will not allow my son to marry from these local women. You will travel. Whatever there is expensive, I'm, I'm ready to bear it. Take a journey. Go and find a wife for my son. And I perceive that in 2023, there's what somebody is looking for. There's what you're, you want to find. Every one of us is looking for something. On this side of eternity, you see, there's always desire and expectations. No matter your attainment, there's something you're still looking for. There's something you're still trusting God for. From the context, see how Abraham was taking the responsibility of ensuring that Isaac marries correctly. Isaac was just seated there, living his life. Can I put it to every young man here? Please serve the Lord this year. Just, just be doing God's bidding. Be fellowshipping with God. God will take responsibility for your concerns. It's another prayer. Oh. It's another prayer. It's another prayer. You, young, Isaac was busy doing what he was supposed to do as a son. Jehovah took the responsibility of getting a wife for him. He was not one who was a brother. Daddy, can you find a wife for me? He was not like Samson. Samson said, I have found a wife. Go and get her for me. No, Isaac sat down as a son. And the father, that's the pattern of scripture. Genesis. Adam did not say, God, I need a wife. God said, no, you need a wife. And God made the wife and brought her for him. 
Even though I'm not speaking about marriage issues, but I, I'm tempted to speak about that. That Jehovah would find a wife or a husband for you. As many of you that are waiting on the Lord for a life partner by his mercies, by his divine orchestration. This is another pronouncement now. God is going to be arranging and he's going to be bringing about your finding your partner in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then this man took a journey. But when the servant was trying to complain, there's a prayer that Abraham prayed. And I want to pray that prayer for you. Thank God for the direction that God is taking us. That's the prayer in verse, um, that's verse, verse 7, the latter part. Verse, verse, is it 8? 7, letter part. When he was saying that, what of if the lady will not come? I wanted, I'm tempted to talk about verse 5. I don't, don't have the time. He said, but what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? I want to just, just, that's a word for somebody. Part of the problem with some of our young girls is that you're not willing to travel far from home. He said, what if I don't find a woman that's willing to travel far from home? This man had to travel. And he needed to go far and find this one and bring her this far. One of the things, if you want Jehovah to find your partner for you, you must be willing to travel far from home. God might not give you your own speck. I have a challenge with some of our young people. Part of the challenge we have is that you have your specs. You have your specifications. So if Jehovah is saying travel far, so no, this is not where I want to go. This is where I want to go. You must... You must be flexible in the hands of God if you must find what you're looking for this year. You must be willing to travel far from home. Travel far from home. <laughs> he that understands, understands. Whatever the word is, I've dropped it for you. So let me jump. The Lord brought me back to drop that word for you. I've dropped it. I'm going to the prayer. The prayer is that he prayed the prayer. He say, God will send his angel ahead of you. I'm praying for you now. I'm praying for you. 2022, 23. That which you're looking for. Listen, because sometimes some of us are working hard, looking for money. You're working hard, looking for a this and that, looking for jobs. You're working hard. You're working hard has not found a job for you. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. I'm praying a prayer for you. Listen. He said, God will send his angel ahead of you and he will see to it that you find a wife there. I pray for you. Whatever you're looking for, whatever is the expectation on this altar, in 2023, God will send his angel ahead of you. God will ensure that you find what you're looking for. Are you looking for a job? You are a graduate and you have a good result and you've been idle, so to say, for this years. I speak the word of God. 2023, God will send his angels ahead of you and you will find a befitting job. What are you looking for? Lord, release your angel ahead of every one of your children. As we step out of church today, your angels will begin to go ahead of us and orchestrate to bring to our, our, our direction what we are looking for. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> verse 12 so this is the part that you are going to pray now this is the part you are going to pray Abraham prophesied he spoke but you see in verse 12 the servant also when he came he didn't just, just say yes Abraham has spoken what did he do in verse 12 he did what he prayed he prayed what was his prayer can we pray the prayer one to go. There, come again. You said, no, you know when you're looking for something desperately. How do you say it? All right, one to go. Let's say, oh Lord, God of my master, I pray, give me success. Show me what? Kindness. Help me do what? The purpose of my journey. Rise up and pray for three seconds. Bata Sabada. 2023. 
Oh Lord, God of my master, give me success. Give me success. Show kindness to my master. Help me accomplish the purpose of my journey. Akato Zalabadide. Give me success 2023. Give me success in my endeavors. Give me success. Give me success. Give me success. Give me success. Pakatakata. Give me success. Jakato Koroba. Jeleta Kepro. Zalakarabato. Zalaka Prokoto, Zeleketa Kete, Grupo Tokoto, Repeta Keprokoto, Ratakata Katakata. Give me success. Give me success. Bless what we do this year. As a church, give us success. Bakata Pokoto Koti Prokotete, Repeta Keprokoto Koto, Jakataka Pokoto. Give me success this year. In my work this year, give me success. In my academics this year, give me success. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please sit down. Can I speak to young ladies in the house? Please be extraordinarily kind this year. <laughs> You got it, ba? You got it. Listen to what happened. See his prayer. He said, the person I will ask to give me water, and she will go extra mile to say that I will give your camels also. Let her be the one. Listen, God is going to be bringing miracles your way, but what will determine whether you get it or not is how you react. Some of you, with your mouth, you have scattered your miracle. You have scattered your miracle. Because the brother didn't look it. Can you pray for grace to be kind? Young girls, can you pray? That God, men are looking for women with virtue. Virtue is what men marry. They don't marry beauty. We don't marry beauty. It's virtue. It's virtue that makes a home. <laughs> it's virtue. Kindness. Going extra mile. There's a part you will play to get your own part. Hmm. Verse 15. Before he had finished praying, he saw the young woman named Rebecca coming. Can you pray that um, this is, let me join this with verse, um, with verse um, 56. But he said, don't delay me. The Lord has made me my mission successful. Now send me back so I can return to my master. We're going to pray against delay in 2023. Delay. That God satisfy us early in 2023. Say, before you finish praying, I won't be surprised if somebody gets his miracle today. I will not be surprised. I will not be surprised. If you receive a call that will change your life for life, I will not be surprised. Before he had finished praying, God had answered. Then the Bible said, when he went and um, talked to the parents, they said, let, let us stay a while. You just came yesterday now, and you want to go today, today. Let us stay with her for a while. He said, no, don't delay me. Please, can you rise to your feet and pray against delay? Say, don't delay me. Don't delay me. Don't delay me. Don't delay me. Pray, pray against delay. Pray that God hasten to perform your word. Hasten to perform your promises. Don't delay me. 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 Hasten to perform your promises. Kapato sokoro prakatite. Jala prakato. Zalaka. Thank you, Father. Because of time, I will take the last... A last point from there. So many things there. So many things. Actually, I've been trusting God. God, what do you have for us this year? I slept. I went back home. I couldn't sleep. Took some time. Woke up quite early. I didn't know. There were other things that were coming to my heart. 
was shortly this morning, the Lord brought this passage. The last prayer there. That's verse 26. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master, for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. You're going to pray that God will lead you straight to you what you're looking for. Straight. God will order your steps. God will guide you. Straight. No go and come. No corner, corner. God will lead you. God will order your steps. Straight. Straight to what you're looking for. Straight. Lead me straight. Lead me straight. Lead me straight. Lead me straight to my master's relative. If you're actually looking for a husband or a wife, pray that God lead me straight to my partner. Lead me straight. Lead me straight to my helper, to my destiny. Every man needs a man. One of the things the Lord has helped us to do is to treasure relationships. Every man needs a man. Lead me straight to the person that you want to use to help me this year. Straight. Lead me straight to my destiny helper. Lead me straight. Straight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't have time to pray other prayers, but let me just summarize them. We're going to be praying Ezekiel Ecclesiastes 5, 9. The Bible said the profit of the land belongs to all. Even the king eats from it. But in Nigeria, it's only the king that's eating from the profit. Others are not eating from it. Put that scripture up. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 9. This year, we're going to be praying for ourselves that we shall eat. There's a good in the land. And we're going to be praying against wicked people that are spoiling, killing, and doing mayhem. We're going to be speaking to them. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for who? Are you inclusive? And you know the earth has profits. There's good in this earth. The king himself is what? By the field. But you know, in Nigeria, it's only the king that's eating the profits. We are not eating the profits. We are going to be praying that God give us the good of the land in 2023. Give us the good. The Bible said in Isaiah 119, you shall eat the good of the land. Can you say that prayer? That God we shall eat of the good of the land in 2023. Go ahead. Briefly pray that prayer. Eat the good of the land. I will eat the good of the land in 2023. Can you join Genesis 7, 11? Bible said when the flood came, water came from up and water broke from the earth. Oh. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I wanted you to do to write down is um, write down your streams of income. Please, you do that after now. Write down how many ways income are coming. Is it only salary? It's not correct. Write down streams of income. Because when the flood came, water came from up, water broke from the earth. And the earth was flooded. When there was flood in Makori, it was not only rain, no. it was they opened a dam that brought flood. So there must be a breaking forth from the earth, something for you. Something must break out from the earth for you. Don't just be waiting for salary. Don't be waiting for somebody to, ah, how many streams of income do you have? Pray that God create other streams of income for me. At least you should have four streams of income. If it's not coming through, if they're not paying salary. Money is coming from, from selling chicken and uh, eggs. <laughs> Money is coming from selling rice. You're eating from there. Don't wait for a salary. Write down streams of income. Pray that this year, the earth will break forth for you. That's the prayer point I'm bringing. Genesis 7 verse 11. That this year, the earth will break forth water from the ground for me. Pray that prayer quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Ah, I thought I had time. I didn't know that I didn't have time. Then, last prayer for Nigeria. Psalms 46, verse 9. There are wicked people that are ensuring that um, killings, there are sick killings going on around, bloodshed and like of it. Psalms 46, verse, God will break their weapons of war. Two prayers we're going to pray for those people that are orchestrating the wickedness in Nigeria. And those that are going to be insisting that. And listen, there's another major prayer we must pray for the elections. I sense that they want to be a manipulation. Yes. They want to manipulate the way it came to my spirit this morning. That the way it happened in June, uh, is it 12, 19 what now? That they want to still do the same manipulation. They don't want to give the person that is going to win. So we're going to pray from this altar. 
and spoil that agenda. We will pray. Two prayers quickly. Number one, we're going to be praying that those people that are sponsoring the killings of people, um, all the kidnappings, all the um, um, go to a committee and, and kill them. The Lord will do what? The Lord is the one that makes it war to cease. What does he do? He breaks the bow and cut the spear in asunder. So God will carry their weapons and break it. God will carry their weapons and break it. They won't have what to use. Then secondly, God will dry their source of wealth. Because they have money to do what they are doing. So pray those two, pray, three prayers. Pray against those people that are orchestrating wickedness in the land. The Lord will frustrate them. The Lord will spoil their plans. Then pray against manipulation against 2023 elections. Pray against manipulation. Pray against manipulations. Pray against manipulations. Shakata. Is someone praying? We are praying for the future, for the next four years. We are praying for what will happen in the next four years. In Jesus' name. Last prayer. Then we'll take the communion. You're going to pray. The earth will fight those that are shedding innocent blood. The earth will fight. Judges chapter 5, verse 20. Bible says God fought from heaven. Then if you read um, 2 Samuel 18, verse 9. Bible said the earth was fighting against Absalom. Just imagine, if somebody was riding a horse. A tree just hooked his hair and held him. The earth was fighting against him. We're going to pray because, oh, that Jehovah will cause the elements of the earth, those that are shedding blood, the earth will begin to fight against them. You don't understand it, but just pray it. Pray it. The earth will fight against the wicked people that are perpetuating wickedness in the land in 2023. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to pray more within the week, next week. Time has failed us to pray all the prayers we want to pray. The communion, we're transiting to the communion now. Please, you can sit down. Father, we thank you for <clears throat> how you have led us to pray. Concerning the year ahead of us, we pray that um, you will hasten to perform all that you have said you're going to do. And take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you're not um, going to partake, we'll just share the grace. And um, those that are partaking, I want to believe that it's the first communion of the year. There are two reasons why we're taking, um, point, two, we usually attach a communion to a, a something. We're going to be taking communion for strength for the journey for the year. Just like you see in First Kings chapter 19 verse 7. The Bible says um, the angel came and woke um, Elijah, Elijah up. Eat. The strength, the journey is far for you. We're going to be taking communion for strength. Strength for the year. So that we don't faint through the year. Then the second, this one came shortly. The second communion is for, you know, when they were in the, in the wilderness, the Israelites, they were taking communion daily. There was supernatural provision. This year, as you eat this communion, it's going to be a contact for supernatural provision for you this year. Because you must live based on God's provision this year. You must not, you, you won't live based on your salary or things that are supernatural provision. So, two contracts. As we partake of this communion, believe that um, you're receiving strength in your body, strength to serve the Lord, strength to journey this year. Then secondly, this communion is a contact for pro supernatural provision. For 40 years, they were daily provided for supernaturally. Ah, yeah. There are testimonies where man has seen fall from heaven, sir. We have received some Allah that we didn't know where he came from. I remember one time uh, in Kaduna then, there was an incident in my wife's account. Was it 20,000? We went to the bank and reported, this is not our money. They said, we don't know where to take it to. We don't know what, what about. Is it 20, more, I think it's 40,000 or 60,000. And there were times that some money came in. We don't know who... who, who, who Listen to me. Listen to me. We're not natural people. Though. <laughs> hey, Baya. If everything is normal and normal about you, listen to read scriptures. There is some supernatural at some points. Some point this person walked on water. Some point he multiplied bread. The other time, he, he did what? There were miracles. These are supernatural. We're supernatural people. Once in a while, 
There's no money in your account, but food is not finishing from the kitchen. I speak to somebody's store. Food will not dry from your store this year. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my wife. Eh? Anything we bring to the store, before you know it, within it has, everything has been shared. I say, like we just came back. We had, a, oh, I, not, I should talk. <laughs> Two cartons of uh, big granite oil. She shared everything. I yesterday said I should buy one liter of oil. I said, this is plenty of oil. You are sharing oil. The last time we were coming back, there was still oil. She said, she wants to give somebody. And there was, oh. <laughs> but I can tell you, the store has been replenished. It has never run dry. Every time, every month, she gathers widows in the house, we pray. And even if small rice, she, oh, you don't understand. But the store, I think there's a prayer she has been praying. And God has decided that from this store, she will feed nations. Uh, that's the pressure that she will feed nations from this store, and that's what is happening by the message of God. Some people are empowering us to feed IDPs every week. This year, we're going to be doing four cookings every I don't want <laughs> it's a passion when you have a passion and you're faithful. God has a way of, of bringing provision and supply. So, this um, afternoon or morning, as we partake of a communion, two prayers that God has I eat of your bread and drink of your blood. I receive strength. And that implies that if you're sick, you're receiving healing in this communion. You're receiving healing. Pakata! You're receiving healing. You're receiving healing. Receive it now. Receive it. Yes, receive it. You came sick. Receive your healing. As you eat of the bread, it will be confirmed. Then secondly, there will be supernatural provision this year. And can I urge you, please, sir, if the Lord puts anything in your heart this year, please don't delay. Somebody's miracle might be tied to you. If the Lord says, carry this in, it can be one tuba. It can be 1,000. Yesterday we were seeing it in the video. I'm still revealing uh, my wife now. I'm still uh, seeing some things. <laughs> there was one 5,000 that somebody sent to the account. She said she feels that she should give somebody in church yesterday. She transferred it. The person too knows it. <laughs> you see me. <laughs> So she asked me, I said, why not? I could, if the Lord is putting in your heart something, hastily do it. Hastily do it. So if whatever God is putting in your heart to do, please do it. Somebody might be depending on that 1,000, that 500, that tuba of yam. One of the things the Lord is putting in our hearts to do, let's, let's be lavish givers here. We have sacrificial givers here. Let's learn from them. Everybody has need. But sir, the best time to, to give is a, when you have a need. That's the best time to give when you have a need. Oh, Jesus, let me stop. <laughs> Father, we pray for this bread and wine. As we partake of it, we receive strength in the name of Jesus. Strength to journey through 2022. We'll not be weary in 2022. Our strength will be renewed like the eagles. We ask as we partake of this communion, there will be supernatural provision. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Elders, please come help us. If you're not partaking, all right, please first time I go to the back, they'll attend to you, then you can partake. Come back. If you're not partaking, please.